Hello everyone and welcome to another beginner's guide for Enigma's Cold War server in DCS World where today we are going to have a look at Fixed Wing Recon. So just as with Cass I am focusing on Fixed Wing Recon in this case, Helicopter Recon will be part of a helicopter video that I'll do at a later date. I'll be breaking this video up into different sections with timestamps down below so you can skip on to the section you are most interested in. So to begin with, I'm going to talk about what Recon is in Enigma's Cold War server, how it helps your team, then moving on to what aircraft you can do this in, then we're going to look at low altitude Recon followed by high altitude Recon. So let's get to it. So first of all, what is Recon on Enigma's Cold War server? So if you've ever done CAS or just opened the F10 menu, you may have seen little orange circles dotted around the edges of hexagons or somewhere within the hexagon. These are the location of ground targets. All of those that you can see are ones that have been scouted by other players doing Recon runs. Broadly, these are broken into two categories. The frontline targets are done by low altitude recon runs. These are the primary targets of CAS planes. Whereas we also have infrastructure targets, things like convoys of trucks, which are further within the hexagons. These are more for your deeper strike missions. By doing recon missions, you highlight these for your entire team. The infrastructure targets will remain on the map until the server reset every four hours. The frontline targets will remain on the map until destroyed or until uh, they are reset, which they do each tick. The way doing recon helps your team is it lets your cast and strike planes make the most of their time. They can head straight to the targets, not have to worry about searching and finding targets, on top of that, because it also lists what type of targets are there, they know exactly what to expect, so know what to bring and what defences to keep in mind. This vastly reduces the loiter time that your cat is having to spend near the enemy front line, and so makes them much less vulnerable, while at the same time making them get far, far more kills. As we've seen in the cast video, the actual destroying of frontline troops is the main thing that pushes the front line. As for what the infrastructure targets that you get with high altitude recon do, those affect the supply throughput of a sector. And on the server, every supply that is produced by a factory has to actually reach the front line. And so by disrupting the infrastructure supply lines, you reduce that, reducing how much the enemy can effectively heal their front line and front depots, and so making the damage that your cast has done last a lot longer. And as any cast player will tell you, having a scouted front line is amazingly useful. So this is a really valuable thing you can do to help your team. So, as for aircraft that you can use to do recon, currently for blue that is the Vigan and the F5, for red it is the MiG-21, the Mirage F1, and the MiG-19 Farmer. The main thing here to note is that only recon planes can do this, and these are explicitly designated when you're picking your slot, they will contain the word recon after the plane name. There are a few of these at each airfield, normally about two or three of each type, and you do specifically have to pick these ones. Now things have changed since the earlier version of recon, you can still arm these planes just as normal, but you do still need to pick these recon slots. As for which planes I would recommend, honestly the fastest plane that you can get is probably the best. Speed has a lot to do with successful recon runs in helping you get away if you are engaged, helping you spend less time over the front so that you are not engaged in the first place, and covering a larger area in the same amount of time is always a good thing. That said, all of them are perfectly capable you just will have to expect to get into a bit more fights if you're flying out in an F5 or a MiG-19, you may well have to defend yourself, whereas in a Vigan you can probably escape most threats that get anywhere near you. So you've picked a recon slot with a correct plane, now how do you actually go about doing recon? We're going to start off with a low altitude recon, this is focused on frontline positions. Now each plane is slightly different with exactly what its field of view is. You can check this at any time by 
uh, selecting check parameters from the F10 menu. Just open up your comms menu, click F10, and you'll see all of the relevant recon options that are there, and we'll be using these throughout this section. But for all of the aircraft, for low altitude recon, what you're aiming to be is below 2 kilometers AGL, or that is 6,500 feet above ground level. The higher you are, the better area you'll be covering, but as I said, you don't want to be above 2 kilometers, otherwise it really starts to drop off and you may miss targets. So ideally aim for slightly under 2 kilometers. keep an eye on your speed, and also bear in mind this is above ground level, not above sea level, so do check with the F10 map as to what the altitude is over the area you're looking, and just subtract that from your desired altitude. As for your flight path, what you really want to be doing is concentrating on where frontline units are spawning. So just like I said in the CAS video, this is only in the hexagons that are directly bordering an enemy hexagon. And you don't need to go very far. You're looking at the very, very edge of that hexagon that is on a border. What I do is check the aircraft's maximum detection range, and then I plot a course just using the F10 ruler to be that distance within the hexagon, and then just run along that edge parallel, taking recordings. As soon as you enter the hexagon, you can go to the F10 menu and select Toggle Low Range Recon, and immediately in the top right, it will indicate that you are recording and will start counting down. You have a limited amount of film. Once that film is exhausted, you want to RTB. Film is quite limited, so it will run out by the time you do a single frontline pass normally. So you can collect one frontline, RTB, and then once you've landed and you're down on the ground, you need to open the F10 menu again and select Deliver Film. You should then get an alert in the top corner telling you how many targets you have managed to identify, and these will immediately appear on the map. Now there's no point going back over the same area, but you can certainly go back into that hexagon, cover a different area on the same front, or a different front line of that hexagon. Now you can certainly be a bit more picky about when you turn on and off your camera. If you do see where the ground targets are, you can turn them on specifically to capture those targets. The exact angle under the nose is listed in the aircraft parameters. Or if in doubt, if you're just starting out, nice and simple, just turn it on when you begin your parallel approach, keep it on until you run out of film, and then immediately turn away, head for friendly territory. Main thing to remember, you do have to RTB to develop the film, so survival is absolutely key here. If you get shot down on a recon run, you didn't do anything for the team. So that was low altitude, now what about high altitude? As we said, these ones are the ones that are specifically looking for infrastructure targets. These are generally found near the centre of each hexagon, and unlike frontline targets, these can appear all the way throughout rear hexagons and so leading from the factories in a line of hexagons down to the front line, you should be able to find these targets. Now here you're aiming for much, much higher altitudes, in this case between 6,000 and 13,000 meters above ground level, so that is anywhere up to and including 42,000 feet, so you're talking very, very high altitude generally want to wait until you're near the center of a hexagon to start turning on the camera. The high altitude recon does have a very, very large range compared to this um, low altitude recon, so you don't need to get anywhere near as close to the targets, just head through the center of your hexagons, and you get a lot more film for these, so you can cover more than one hexagon in a single run, just bear in mind that you are probably going to be a pretty inviting target, since you're likely to be contrailing at that altitude. Otherwise, the process is the same. Once you're in position, open up your comms menu, go to F10 and toggle your high altitude recon, and start recording. You'll see the amount of remaining film will steadily tick down as you move through. Continue recording until you run out of film, then it's time to RTB. It's also worth noting that there is no problem with doing both high and low altitude recon at the same time. They are two different sets of film that you have, and so you can do one followed by the other. Just bear in mind that 
the longer you're loitering out there, the more chance it is you'll get shot down and you'll lose everything. So it's a bit of a risk reward situation. But otherwise, just the same as with low altitude recon, when you're done, return to base. When you land, open up your comms menu, go F10, return the film, and again in the top corner it will tell you what, if anything, you've detected. You only have to do this once, even if you've got both high and low altitude recon, they both get turned in at the same time. So that is recon. One thing to note is there is no need to reload your film. As soon as you land, the film does automatically get replenished. Just do remember to turn in your film before taking off again. Otherwise, this is a fantastic way to either set yourself up for a really good cast run afterwards, or just generally help your team make the most of their cast flights. If you have any questions, please do leave them down below, and if you have any other recon tips, please do again leave them down below in the comments. I will be covering other aspects of Enigma's Cold War server in future videos, but if you have any specific areas you would like covered, uh, please do let me know. Otherwise, I hope to catch you in the next video. Until then, remember to be kind to yourselves and everyone else. Cheers!